Welcome back. Yeah, I'm back. Am I on? Yeah. You're good. I didn't check my mic. Okay, cool. You're, you're on? You're back. I am you're back. You're on, I'm on. That's it. We're back, baby. No, you're feeling a little tired. What, what's going on? I'm a little Don't tired. Yeah, so I just, well, I, I've been on vacation for like a week, so it wasn't just, I yeah. got back from the Congress, but before that, I took my family camping for a one night overnight, which was a, an adventure. I wanted the kids to experience camping. They never did that. Then we went to Frankenmuth, Michigan which was like a German town. Like all the buildings look like it's like a Bavarian style. Yeah. And we took the family there. And then we went straight to Indianapolis for the the 10th National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil in the convention center. And I just got back. So unfortunately- You guys were just running, running. It was it. Well, we, well, my wife was only off for certain. She finally got some time to break away. Yeah. And so we had, <laughs> it just worked out. And uh, so it was fun. We had a good time. The Congress, unbelievable. I'm still taking it all in because I was like rewatching videos and, you know, posting content and talking to my wife about some of the stuff and reliving it. And they also have the whole entire conference is online, which is nice. So individually they have all the videos. Yeah. But now the breakouts, they also have all for free. Oh, really? So I didn't get to go really any of the I don't breakouts. Know the breakouts one. Yeah. So yeah, they're putting those up because she was, uh, my wife was just telling me, there was a healing one with Dr. Mary Healy oh. that they listened to on the way home and they were driving because we drove separate. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, that's awesome. Because even if you went to one breakout, you can only go to one. They'd have like six or seven going at one time. And that depends on how many people were there. They had, you know, X amount of capacity. So you had to sign up in advance to go to it. So you couldn't see all of them simultaneously. So you can go back and listen to all the different, there's so many people from all over the world with so many different topics, mm. mostly obviously about the Eucharist, but excellent it was fifty-five thousand catholics praising the lord in the eucharist talk about i saw the clip from the first night they did adoration i mean just in the stadium packed fifty-five thousand. our lord comes out and it's just oh, it's awesome. to be able to silence a stadium like that prayerfully to you, you feel the spirit just watching it it was it was weird and i was talking to my wife about it. i'm like it's it, it's it's one thing to see it on tv obviously it's like watching a concert on tv but to like be front row at, you know, whoever your favorite artist is, it's just a different experience. And then I found out I was on social media, like they had the lights, obviously when the monstrance is going through the, the convention center, the lights are following it. Yeah. At one point it wasn't the lights. God was shining his light through the window onto when the, the, the monstrance got put onto the altar in the middle stadium. That wasn't lights. It was actual sunlight. The light, they had lights too, but this huge beam of light came right in the whole entire thing, which there's tons of windows and they got them blocked out. The light got right onto the exactly what oh, that's awesome. that. I was like, oh, they give me chills. I didn't even Did you capture it. any of that? I think I have. I got to go back. I took so many pictures and so many videos, yeah. but they did adoration every night. So then they started it with uh, Wednesday night. There wasn't anything going on during the day. Everything basically was check-in over two hours in line. to Jeez. You get this many people. Yeah. So I was like, well, that was her. Like a lot of people were waiting over three hours to get checked in. You get your swag bag and your, you know, your badge and all, all your different stuff. And then Wednesday night was seven o'clock. They started with with adoration, and then we had you know some speakers and praise and worship, and then the next day started with the uh, divine liturgy with uh, Cardinal Dolan, Archbishop of New York, mm -hmm. which he he was pretty funny. He was good. Just some like eleven hundred priests, fifty five thousand yeah. people, and like I don't know how many scores of religious. Brothers and sisters, I mean, everywhere you went, you saw. And they're still there. We're, they're still there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and then, yeah, last night was Father Mike Schmitz and Mother Olga of the mm. Sacred Heart. Have yeah. you heard of her? Yeah. She is unbelievable. She mm. talked for about 45 minutes. She, she like, I, I mean, I was crying. I mean, it was really emotional. Like a lot of people, they're very good at, you know, telling they're professional speakers, but yeah. it's also, you're there with the Eucharist, you're there with other people who are on fire. And she just, she had some like five or six amazing stories about the Eucharist in different ways that was so touching and so moving. I was I never heard of her. I've heard of, you know, Sister Bethany Madonna and Sister Miriam and those kind of, but I, she was new to me. So I was like, oh, she was reminding me like, like Mother Teresa, basically. Mm -hmm. That's how she's from the Middle East, went through four wars and she was just unbelievable, like a saint. I mean, I felt like I was in the, in the, in the, in the presence of a saint. That's what it mm -hmm. felt like. So it was from the, from the music, the praise and worship we're used to here at St. John. But what I really liked is what the church should be doing and kind of like what we talked about last time. I don't know if anyone took it the wrong way. I hope 
they didn't take us the wrong way when I was playing devil's advocate, but is that what they did was blend awesome praise and worship music with Latin. They, they, they would do silence with adoration and then it would be all different styles of music and different ways to worship our Lord. And nobody was fighting about it. Everybody was just there. Everybody was just praising Jesus. And it yeah. was just like beautiful to see it all come together, all the different styles from all over, not just the country, but there was people from all over the world praising Jesus. But it was heavy in Latin. I mean, a lot of it was, and, and there's something to it. Like last night, adoration was all, no music. It was five or six uh, priests singing, almost all in Latin. And I mean, you could hear a pin drop it was so like, it was giving me chills just thinking about it. It was so moving that that's just five voices filled this football stadium. And there's just Jesus on the, on the altar. And there's people, probably no kneeling, right? Cause you're in, you're in a football stadium, you're in bleachers. No, they're never, people are kneeling. Yeah. I, kneel, not, I, I kneeled for as long as I could to my back kind of gave out, but they were actually selling like kneelers, like the little pads. Oh really? Like the National Eucharistic Revival and stuff yeah. like that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a thought. Yeah. They were, they were yeah. selling like little, little kneelers and stuff it was cool. Yeah. I got a swag. I got a, I got a Eucharistic, uh, Congress sweatshirt, Katie and I, it was freezing in there <laughs> and I'm never cold. I'm like, Oh, I need a sweatshirt. So I bought a sweatshirt and yeah. got a bunch of books and got to meet so many awesome people. People. So who what was, us. what was a highlight for you? Adoration. That definitely was the, the unbelievable that 55,000 people were worshiping Jesus and Eucharist. Do they do a full hour or what do they do? It was about an hour, both nights. Yeah. yeah it started at 7 a.m., ended about 10 o'clock. Yeah. So between speakers, music and adoration and silent time of prayer. And it was for that many people, like it was quiet. I mean, you have occasional kid you'll hear crying or, you know, my kids were, you know, moving around and, and by the end of long days at 10 o'clock at night, by that time they're, they're falling asleep and they're tired and What's beautiful about opportunities and moments like the adoration at the Eucharistic Congress gives you a glimpse of what heaven is going to be like. Because we have an adoration chapel where I can go, you can go. You know, you get a few people in there. You might do Eucharistic adoration in a church, maybe a little larger of a crowd. But it gives you a glimpse of heaven when it's a stadium full, 55,000 people yeah. of all different backgrounds, of all different backgrounds, even within the church. Like you said, priests, religious, lay. And we're all there adoring God, it's a glimpse of heaven. Yeah. So it's just a beautiful thing to be able to, to be a part of it. Yeah. And it was just so great. It, it helps sustain your faith. I know we're like, we're like, feel like we're in a bubble. Like me and you, we love the Lord. We're like, but a lot of people in their parishes, they probably don't see that as much where yeah. like everybody, like they're passionate about discipleship and evangelization and making disciples and trying to bring people to Jesus. That's not a norm within our church. So when you take that a whole stadium full of people who are like traveled or pilgrims to come here for this sole reason. It's like you feed off of each other. It's like, it's, it's like contagious. It's like, Oh, you're here. You too. Me too. Like, Whoa. Like we're instant like friends. And you start talking to people, like, yeah. especially, you know, people we follow on, on social media or they follow us like, Oh, I know you like, Hey, what's up? And then taking pictures and hanging out and trading stories. Do you mean anybody notable? Yeah. I met, um, on the Catholic couple, I posted a lot of, cause I had the kids with us. So if it was like with the family, I posted, if it was not, I'd post it on purposely, but, uh, relevant radio had a big thing. So all the, the, the people from relevant radio, Patrick Madrid, who is like my wife's favorite and the kids like listen to him every day. My wife's, but they never get to listen live cause it's always during school. So my wife listened to it on the podcast and the kids want to call in and ask questions, but since it's not live, they can't. So they had a live show where you could ask questions. We just timed it perfect, walked in. They got right in line. Both of my kids got on the live show. They videoed it. Oh, that's cool. And so they were on set with him, sitting down with microphones, sitting with Patrick for about six minutes. They both got to ask Patrick Madrid a question. They're good questions. Talk clearly. I was very proud of them. Yeah. So I got it all. I videotaped that. That was awesome. You remember what they asked? So Braden asked, um, how come some prayers get answered and some don't? Oh, that's a good So then Patrick Madrid kind of went into a story about his life and, and how it shaped. And so they're like, oh, okay, that sounds right. And then Avery asked, if when we sin, does Jesus' cross get heavier? And if so, when I go to confession, does it get lighter? Nice. That's a that's a that's a deep that's question. A deep that's, question. A deep. that's a proud papa moment. Yeah. yeah. And she thought they both came up with their own questions. Like we just made wow. sure they knew what they were. That's a good to question. say their name and we have to have Braden and a Avery come up with questions for the podcast. We'll I'm telling you, out of the mouth of, of babes. Topics, yeah. 
It was good. And I want to talk about both of those questions. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was, that was really cool. And my wife is like fangirling. Like she doesn't get like that, but yeah. she like, that's her favorite Catholic probably is Patrick Madrid. Cause she just like, he's such a, like a grandpa. He's got 11 kids, like 29 grandkids. And the way he handles apologetics, I aspire to want to be more amiable and, and, and nice. It's very relatable and accessible. He does it. And Charitably, even keeled, he yeah. keeps his cool. So that was really cool. I met Father Josh Johnson. He was real cool. He was oh, nice. walking. He's walking through, and I'm like, "Hey, I don't want to burn you, you up." Gotta have him on the podcast. I wish. Yeah, he was awesome. I'm like, I don't want to burn you up, Father. I'm like, I'm gonna take a picture. What's up? You know. And then, so, you know, as soon as you take a picture, of someone, everyone's like, "Who's who's that?" Like everyone's like starting looking around because at the convention center. But in that crowd, I mean, he'd be a notable. He was just no one noted. He was just walking. He, he just he was just walking through. I don't know if he was okay. like cutting through or doing something. I just caught him as he was leaving somewhere. In but the they, back of his head, you know, he was like, "Oh." Yeah. Almost made it. Yeah. Almost made it. Well, they go to different, like, you know, people buy booths and they sell merchandise or they have ministries or they're trying to promote books yeah. and publishers and you name it. There's hundreds and hundreds of these. And then they do like appearances from this person goes there from this time to this time. So there's set times where people do do those things. Yeah. I met uh, Jared Zimmer from uh, Word on Fire. Yeah. He's like a masculine guy. I'm like, that's what we talked about, which was mm -hmm. cool. Who, uh, oh, Father Spitzer. Oh, yeah. So great. Father Spitzer was there. Yeah. He was very I'd great. I'd love to talk to him. He was cool. He was very nice. He He's so intelligent the way he bridges science and. And he had his handler with him to help him because he was taking a picture. He's like this way. And he's like, no, turn to the right. He's like this. He was just so patient, yeah. so nice. We talked to him for like 15 minutes. I'm uh, Pat, remember the guys from uh, BVM from uh, Crunch? Oh, were the they Crunch? There? They were there. Um, Ethan, he's working full time now with BVM, by the way. Okay. So we we, we Shout connected. Out to them. Yeah, Sister Miriam James, I'm mm. got to take a picture with her. She nice. was really cool. The, the we did a podcast or IG live with the Saints Alive, Alex and Melissa from their sign with Halo now. Mm -hmm. The Saints Alive podcast, which is if you have kids, they're the best stories of saints. They're just awesome. So got to hang out and meet Alex in person. Who else did we meet? There was tons of people. The guys at uh, Exodus 90. When I was in the seminary, one of the guys who lived, we were in the same class, lived across the hall from me. And this this was at the North American College. So you would get visitors, bishops, cardinals, different priests. That would, they'd have to come to Rome on business. They'd stay at the college. Oh, that's cool. And uh, yeah, it was cool. You get to meet a lot of different people that way. And uh, the guy who was uh, in the room across the hall from me, he was... He had an experience. So they would stay on the fifth floor, all these guests. And uh, we were on the fourth floor, and he's waiting for the elevator. Elevator doors open, and it's uh, then Father Barron, now Bishop Barron. And doors open, and he sees Father Barron. <laughs> and he just, like, in his head, like, the gates of heaven just opened <laughs> up. And, like, the word on fire music started playing in the background. Yeah, right. And he like, he's afraid to get in the elevator. <laughs> he gets in the elevator and he's like, I'm like, so what happened? Did you, did you talk to him? He's like, well, he just had a toothpick in his mouth and just kind of like had his head towards the ground the whole time. And, you know, he was very cordial and Hey, how are you? And what do you, you know, where are you from? And, yeah. and then he just got off on his floor and kept going. <laughs> I'm like, you build up these like notions in your yes. head, like, especially in it's the gonna be this, world. Yeah, awesome it's experience. like Catholic it's famous. Like, it's these like, are just normal people. And it's so weird. And who uh, the TikTok priest that's really popular? He's big on IG too. Is Father David Michael Moses? Mm. He's funny. He's awesome. Oh yeah, he'd be right. Yeah. So we got to take a picture with him, talked to him for a little bit, and then he gave us a blessing, our family a blessing. Nice. It was awesome. Yeah. Probably one of the cool highlights of that, where you get to meet people. They had a gentleman, a priest from the Dominican shrine of Saint Jude, and he had the largest relic of Saint Jude. Is it and, the forearm? With the forearm. Yeah. So yeah, and then so then he, you know, he did a healing uh prayer. He had it with him? Oh yeah. And he put it on my my all my religious stuff. Oh all, wow. All my religious stuff, third class uh third class relic. They just them. give him that relic to He was carrying it. He was like, Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let's go. I need all the healing <laughs> I can get. Like a Lombardi trophy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so cool. Like yeah, it's a big piece of uh, the humorous. So See, yeah. the only Catholics can do that. Yeah. Okay. Where else would you go? Where it's all these like young people, older, whatever, and it's like some dudes just walking around with a forearm. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so then he did a, like a healing prayer and touched all of my religious items, which was oh, that's really, awesome. Which is really cool. Yeah. And just met a bunch of other just some people that recognized us, you know, from uh, purposely and Catholic couple. And, okay, cool. 
And it was it was awesome, especially having my kids there yeah. to see, let them to see that, you know, like this is this is like what it this is what it's about. Like it's like the we kept saying it's like Catholic Disney World because it was like so much going on and so many different people and it's like so many things to do. It wasn't like just talks and adoration. It's like there's events. They had the Shroud of Turin. They had a uh, big thing with reliquaries. They had music and dance and live music and different coffee shops and. Like everywhere you went, there was something cool going on. And then outside they had food trucks and Father Leo had his food truck and there's like a big event. But what really started to move me and Father Josh talked a lot about it, but there's a lot of homeless people. We're in the middle of a city yeah. to see people serving and ministering to, to people who are homeless or living on the street. Like people move to it. My son, little Brandon, he's such a little holy little dude. Like he was so moved by it. I don't think he'd ever seen a homeless person before. So it really bothered him for mm. like both days. Like he wanted to make sure that we stopped, talked to him, gave him some money, gave him some food and like, you know, gave him a sticker like Jesus loves you because like, they're passing out free stickers. And so he was just moved by that. And obviously I was moved. It's like, but to see that all over the city, there's a lot of homeless people. So being surrounded by you know, people who are putting their faith into into action throughout mm. the city. It was pretty cool to see. And, you know, hopefully the kids are moved by that experience to see, you know, this is what Catholicism on fire is like. This is a revival. And it was it was something to see. And I, hopefully they remember it. I mean, we can go back with videos and stuff like yeah. that. But I know I'll remember it. So hopefully they it'll propel them in, in their faith. Yeah. For sure. Any uh, nuggets or anything that you heard? Yeah, for sure. That so you took away? I'm sure there was a lot, but there, there was a lot. So I never really, I, I've heard of him. But I never listened to him talk was Monsignor Shea. Oh yeah. That book that the, the, the Christen, apostolic age. Yeah. So he didn't talk about that, but on the way home, I listened to two talks about it. Yeah. So I'm like engulfed in it, which actually ties into what we talked about last week about the the yeah. church and the vision of. Uh, Father Maletta does a talk that's based on Monsignor Shea's work in that area. We've got it on our SJE plus YouTube channel. It's called Embracing our missionary identity. Okay. It's two parts. So rich. Yeah. All right. So go ahead. No, so that's all right. Well, I got, down that. well, I got Father Maletta, the sequel. We yeah. got, we got two books. Mm -hmm. So Katie's going to give him the, Oh, nice. She got it. We got a free book from his university, University of St. Mary. The lady gave us a couple books, which was excellent. Um, so Father Mike's talk, I thought was really hit on the revival part, which yeah. was that revival is not possible without repentance. Mm. And that's, that's a big part of it. It's like, we have to, we can't go to these mountaintop experiences like on transfiguration. We go up to the mountain, things have to be different. We can't just come home and take this little things that we learned and try to shove it back into our normal lives that we have. If we're not changed, our hearts aren't transformed. It's not going to stick. It, I'll be on this mountaintop high for a couple of days. But if I don't start to put those things that I, the Lord spoke into my life or those nuggets that I learned or the way that he's calling me to, if I don't put that into practice, like right away, it's going to be like, okay, it was a great memory. I can look back on it and think about it, yeah. but was my life going to be transformed? You know, and repentance gets a bad rap. I mean, it's from metanoia, which means to, to change our mind, to go beyond our mind, to put on the, the mind of Christ to, to change. We can't, he explained it like we can't go home and just live in the same house. We need a whole remodel. And what ends up happening is this flame that we have in our lives that we're full on fire. We're like, we got the zeal now, like we got built up and got all this stuff. We can't go home with the fire without knowing that there's going to be fire extinguishers that are things that are going to try to put that fire out or the things that we are regular temptations or the things that we struggle with. If we just come back and try to jam this into our normal, ordinary lives, yeah. it doesn't stick. And that's what we always are trying to do. Like, oh, I read this book. Okay, therefore... Okay, cool. But it's like, if we don't put in practical steps or plan to try to, you know, to put it into our lives, it just fades away, you know? So I thought that was really, uh, the other one was Mother Olga of the Sacred Heart. Her talk is that uh, how your faith in the Eucharist can really change everything. Like she believes so much so in the power of the Eucharist that she was bringing it not only to people serving, like, you know, like home people, she takes care of people in hospitals and drug addicts, but like she knew that the Eucharist can heal people from a baby was born one pound. She went there every single day and the baby couldn't receive the Eucharist, but she would put the pick in the incubator touching the baby. 
And it was like this baby survived for 191 days in the NICU. Like the 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 for the like the baby who was born the lightest in the NICU, the longest, that has no permanent problems. Like there was drug addicts. There was a a lady who. Uh, was dying of cancer and the daughter, she always wanted to walk her daughter down the, the aisle, but her, she was, her daughter was only five years old. So she got a special dispensation for her daughter to receive her first communion early. So her, she could walk her down the aisle in a, in a dress with her wedding gown as communion to have her, her marriage with Jesus in the first, first Eucharist. Like she just kept telling, but it was because of her belief in the true presence that Jesus wants to change our lives. Too much we approach every Sunday that, in a routine that, oh, this is communion, I come to church, I leave. But no, expecting things, expecting miracles, expecting that Jesus wants to change us. So I thought that was really powerful. Um, it's just overall that I can I can surrender more. I need to be, I need to, to let go of a lot more things than, uh, you know, repentance involves con continually re-surrendering every day. Mm -hmm. I went to confession and had a great confession. So it was just, Knowing that I, I'm on this mountaintop experience, I come down, I can't let it go to waste. I have to truly repent. I have to truly be Jesus, not only to my wife, to my kids, to those who I encounter. I just want to be better. I want to be Jesus to people, but I have to do things differently if I want that to happen. I love that. 